Yo, what's up guys? Stardust here, so welcome to the first gauntlet up against uh, Jackalow this time around. So, he's playing interesting frog hybrid. Going up against my first deck, the Amazonas deck. Got some Waho cards. He's gonna put up a totally awesome, good on some Lumina and Mill 3. Gets a Palo Zoke in the grave, so that gives me a clock to work with. I'm gonna use the set rotation, force him to either use the negate immediately or um, allow me to resolve set rotation, which he does. Gonna activate the Warhawk Mountain, use deployment. Get the key queen for free. Um, almost misplayed by going into the battle phase here. <laughs> also this monster. And to get out of this board. With the greatness of ease, and we can start dealing a lot of damage. That's the one strength of Amazonas that I can OTK pretty hard. And that's nice. But he just goes for a solo setup again, lost the solo recharge, into the charge. Link 3, into Link 4. He actually used top logic Bobble Dragon as a boss here, then blows up the entire field. So I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, he runs over my monster now, and due to, due to the effect, I still receive the full damage. So might as well not have summoned, although I do float into a new one. New copy of the monster. Another copy of deployment. Realistically though, what's it gonna do, right? Not a lot, I can tell you. Sure, immune to battle destruction, but that's not gonna do much. He's gonna activate some traps to nuke the field. Attack directly. Now I'm kind of in a situation where... Yeah, I can't out this field. So yeah, I mean, can I do that? Field spell gone, nukes the field. I saw the big boy. Attack over one of his monsters again, but yeah, it's just not gonna be enough. It's a pretty close battle though, I mean. His monster is unaffected, that's why he runs his hybrid. He can just bolt me without bolting himself. And he takes the first match. So well done, Jackalo. Let's see how it performs in the next round. This time he's up against Monarchs and not any kind of Monarchs, Frog Monarchs. I figured if I'm gonna play Monarch in this, I might as well just play a fun variant and not the... Oh, I just saw something. Well, okay, it's, it's fine, I'll fix this going forward. Quickly fix this. Okay. There was no audio from the client so far, but it should be fine now. I'm not gonna record the entire video just because of a little bit of background noise not being there. But yeah, we uh, stopped for the stop card, which we didn't know was... Uh... Actually, he shuffled the deck, so... Fair enough. But yeah, the Ryzer definitely uh, still... I don't know any card it is there. It's not exactly as great as it once was, but you know. There's we reasoning here. Yeah, what do you even call? What do you call? I mean... Gets the wrong number. Also the tree board. There's gonna be a very disgusting play from our side. Draft phase, okay, spiritual water art. Say goodbye to the card in your hand. It's fine, he can now go into the like, next like or something. But still, you know. And this is hard to play out. This is not a monster active effect really that activates the trap from his hand, I believe, at least. Force it out with Gaius, then remember, wait. Gaius doesn't force shit out because it's unaffected. Go for the bouncer, which is kind of hard for him to out since it's a 2k defense. The effect doesn't really matter. I just want to apply some pressure. This can get over his XCs. Now I see something very cool. Light and darkness. He can try his best, but yeah, he's just not going to be able to out this. It's a very hard counter against this deck, Light and Darkness Dragon, which is a card you don't often see nowadays. But, I mean, since we run 3 Gors and we run the 3 board, it's easy to just, yeah, we can make it, basically. Stuff on the gate left, so his back row doesn't do much against us. He's forced to make the plays here, not us. 
And yeah, his trap doesn't do anything. He just gets negated and he does not trigger Palio, I believe. That's the reason. Anyways, Light Dark is still tries to activate, but it does actually activate. Akmal grabs the Allure. Shot for. Just in case, he tries to be funny with some like a mirror force. I don't think the back row is public knowledge. We do go back to Toad and... Ironically enough, Jackalo using frogs get beaten by the frog XCs. Totally awesome. So yeah, had a great duel. Thanks uh, Jackalo for joining me. See you in the next battle. He by the way is a YouTuber. Make sure to check his channel out. And let's see uh, how the next challenge is about. Right, right. So let's pause for a second. So we're up against Poker Varios. I think what makes this specific showdown interesting is that Pokevarius always tells me Cult Code Talkers, Code Talkers are really great. It's not like I ignored it or anything, it's more so that I just never ended up doing it. I never tried out Code Talker. So now I face my punishment by having to face Code Talkers without really knowing what I do. So it's something interesting. Well, what do I do? Well, you'll see in a second. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. We can already see what's gonna happen tonight. Yeah, this is a very strong deck. It's uh, one of the top decks in OCG for a reason. Pokevarius is very is a huge fanatic of this strategy. Shouts to them for uh, joining me with such a deck that they're passionate about. Yeah, that's the thing I like about the challenge. People not necessarily playing meta, although this is meta in OCG. Playing decks they're passionate about and trying to beat my some of my top decks with their top deck, basically. It's a lot of fun to see. It's the thing I do love about you here, I often don't play, like playing more than a card game, but seeing people play decks I'm passionate about, that's really cool. But yeah, right now we just don't really have a way to out this field, I mean, how are we ever realistically gonna do that, right? There we go, Access Code. That's not the biggest surprise ever. <laughs> it was about to happen at some point. And now we die. Yep. So yeah, that is not a huge surprise. Now, look virus, well done, let's see how you do in the second match. Alright, alright, so I get a start. I'm not, I mean, <laughs> we get the okay, or reasoning gets ashed. Sometimes it do be like that. Only just got a 3 bot set pass, we have the course, so we can stay alive. And they only have one monster. No, they could try to ball with desires, which they try to do. Monster reborn is a decent extender, not gonna lie. Splash Mage can revive it. Let's go get all, get all revive that. And there comes the Heat Soul, so I want to talk about Scott for a second. It's basically one of the big reasons why this deck is meta. With a quick effect, you can pay 1000 life points to draw one card, and then if your life points are 2000 less, you can banish it from the field. Especially summon Link 3 or lower Cyber's Monster from extra deck except itself. Now, what makes this really good is that it's a quick effect. Uh, half Tons Baton. Um, and it draws. So theoretically, you can draw in your own turn, opponent's turn, draw, that's two draws. Meanwhile, Cybers have a lot of advantage. What you say is this card has to be linked, so if you can revive it, yeah. It's a very interesting strategy. But they didn't play around Gores, so that's uh, gonna be painful. They didn't respect the Gores at all. This is just gonna draw another card, okay. And the Stormforth, for, Force out sort of Judgment, fair enough. I mean, I can't be too upset about that trade. Get the next Stormforth, future reference. I wanted to make the other Nightmare, but I'm not even sure if I run it. My head was summoning something else. But it, it's just fine, it works. Now I just nuke it with that, and it's out of it, and it's back in the extra deck, so I cannot revive it. Now they go at the Mining, and this should be enough to finish this, that has to be said. And I'm pretty sure that I just started styling on this, for no good reason. Except, you know, having fun. Which is somewhat respectable. He built a huge wall. But now here's the problem. Takes the frog, okay. Yes, we live. Yeah, so at this point, I should have game right. Now 
Now they make a huge misplay, destroy their own monster, making them unable to get over Gorsh. I believe Pokevirus, uh, Pokevirus personally told me something among the lines of, yeah, I was just styling. Um, I was styling, um, and yeah, I ended up misplaying. It's a huge shame, because here we summon the Mega Caius. Matching their monsters, and burning for game. So, Pokevarius, it's a shame I see the misplays, that these happened. It's interesting to see this deck in action though. Thanks for showcasing it to us all. Now, I still got um, two other duelists recorded, but they both went really far in this challenge and don't want to make this video too long. So stay tuned for that upload. If you're not in this video and you have dueled me, well then you know you're in the next video. But I'm not going to spoil too much, but both of them lasted really, really long. And uh, yeah, I, give it, I want to give a shout out to everyone that joined me. And as always, if you want to join me in a future episode of The Gauntlet, if you want to face me on stream, make sure to check out my Twitch, follow me there, and go to my Discord, and make sure to get the starter Twitch role in that Discord. Just get notifications whenever I go live. I play a variety of content, I play various games on my Twitch channel, and this Gauntlet is one of them. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks everyone for joining me. We'll see you in the next one. Start signing out. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Peace.